I want to say uh, right off the bat, uh, thank you to the person who shall remain nameless who decided that it would be a great idea if I had Crazy Stone and sought to ensure that such things were possible. Now, I played a couple of games against Crazy Stone. I hi I'm highlighting these two games because I thought they were very interesting and highlight some of my opinions about said particular program. Those of you who are not aware of what Crazy Stone is, I suggest that you, I don't know, Google Crazy Stone and find out more about it. Suffice it to say, it is a program that plays up to the 7 Don level, depending on your processor. It has interesting tools, it allows you to review your games, kind of analyzes your games, you can play it, you can have it pick up in the middle of the game, which is interesting. Like, if Let's say you're playing on IGS or KGS or Tygem or wherever, and you lose on time. You're like, darn it, you don't know who's gonna win, right? You're you're curious to know how that game was gonna was was supposed to finish. You could actually load that game up into Crazy Stone and be like, hey, you play, and I guess you can continue that. But this is my game uh, against it. Get off of monitor capture. This is my game against it. Uh, it's white, it's at the 7 Don level. I had it on a limited time, so it could use as much time as it wanted to, and it will use quite a bit of time uh, if you say that it can. Uh, occasionally, throughout the game, I remember going back and fixing food while I was waiting for it to, fight, to decide on its move. And I came back and I'd only use like a minute of my time because it used quite a few. So unlimited, you have to be uh, ready to like sit down and play for over an hour, because it will use as much as it can. So, that aside. Here is Yield first game. I was black. And it was white. I decided to approach it. It decided to take territory. And I had an option here, clearly. I could have backed off and played that variation. I decided to go with one of my old favorites to, to see how it responded. Because uh, we don't usually play this old variation anymore. Where we launch into the mini Chinese. We don't typically play this. Because there's a lot of really bad Aji at uh, C7 combined with the approach at d15 really crushes your pincering stone. Don't really see it quite uh, very quite often. Um, more something more natural would be just to like back off here for example and then approach here and then see if it backs off and then if it does you could do something like this and that'd be okay too but I wanted to you know just play my old variation that I liked. I, I fell in love with this when I first saw it. You don't play it very often nowadays but I don't care I still like it. So we have mini Chinese. It decided to clamp. Now here's a question for everybody viewing. If you were black and someone clamped, what would you anticipate white to play next? How would this situation continue? What is the result that you expect to see in this lower left-hand corner? Because this becomes really, really important. Why not e6 as c11? Um, well, c11 sets up the mini Chinese Fuseki, right? Because we've got a 3 4 stone in the upper left. Therefore, approaching here is into a pincer. If I was going to not play the Chinese, then I would just play here. Because this still leaves bad Aji behind uh, there, too many unknown players. So we still we wouldn't play e6 regardless. We would play. Uh, this, but I'm not playing it because I wanted to play the framework. That's all. Oh, unless you mean here. I don't know. You said you can sack the stones in Tanuki? Um. Could sack the stones in Tanuki. It is the variation that I went with. I went with this one. Expecting. that those stones would be killed. That I would, in fact, sack the stones and Tanuki. Because right now, 
I anticipate the connection. I have to Hane. Maybe white pushes first, causing me to extend, and then goes back and kills. Or not, depending on, you know, what white wants to do. White instead plays here and says, no, I'm not sacrificing, we're going to fight. So right away it says, we're fighting. Which actually is a variation, it's just not one that we see very often, but this is actually a Jiseki still. Okay? This is just a Jiseki. We Atari here, and then do a one point jump. White extends, black extends. Now the correct move here is to play B10. We obviously don't Atari out because the Atari leads into an Atari and then you have to extend, then you get capped, you lose a very, very, very important liberty. So that would be that would be bad variation. But we expect B10 to be played right now. Because white blackstone is supposed to die. What white is giving black is a lot of solid influence in exchange for these stones to be dead. I was I was okay with that. I want the influence and I'll take it and play over here or something after I'm nice and strong. White plays here, unfortunately. Which now means that those stones do not get sacrificed and they're dead. Now here I should probably Atari. But I didn't, I connected. I was just kind of happy to get my stone's not dead. But yeah, this should have been there. And for those of you who can't visualize what should have occurred, it should have been like this, 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 this. And then I want to say... I want to say there? Anyway, we have this instead. Then it goes to try to live. Which it can obviously do pretty easy. Han ahead of two and three, again fairly easy. Looking to find maximum uh, base for itself. And then it played away, which I thought was a little bit strange. However, I should note at this point, um, let's see, those of you who are watching this on stream, and those of you who are watching this later on on YouTube will be able to see this. If I switch into monitor capture, you can see real quickly in Crazy Stone that it's got this like a little evaluation thing on the bottom of the board, like who's ahead. And one side, you know, fills up the other half depending on what essentially the score is, okay? So you can kind of get, get the impression of what the computer thinks is going on in the game. Who's ahead, who's behind, by how much. Right? After this was played, after this variation was played, White was very much leading in Crazy Stone's opinion. That the game was very, very far in White's favor. So it, it liked what happened. I played away. I thought it was going to back off, but it didn't. It decided to attack me, which I thought was very, very aggressive. It decides to play lightly here. I go and destroy its shape because that's what's fun to do. And then I come on out. So I made it a little bit heavy here. It has to worry about uh, a couple of stones. Crazy defended itself, which I thought was okay. I got Sente now, so I'm going to go and poke at the shape point to see what uh, is over here. Maybe I get to take something in Sente later on. Maybe I can bring out my stone. Don't really know, but this is the shape point, so I went ahead and poke at it. Crazy Stone uh, hit me here. I descended because I can now connect. This, these stones are now alive. And then it played elsewhere. And it played elsewhere, which I thought was very, very interesting. It's trying to unsettle me, I guess, in the upper right-hand corner. Okay. I respond. Crazy Stone comes out. And it does that a lot, too. Occasionally, it'll play a move away. 
and then come back to something as if it's playing a time suji it's a little bit strange in that regard like i found it happening uh, a bit when i played it in blitz but i found it happening a bit in the longer games that i've been playing against it as well it'll like play away as if it wants more time to think even when i gave it unlimited time there's like no biyomi no main time it's unlimited time but it, it still kind of exhibits that sort of uh behavior I bring my stone out, he jumps out, I take my corner back, so he defends himself again. Now at this point I was relatively okay with how the game was proceeding, and I make my first really really big mistake. I go into the 3-3 which is stupid. I should play here first, and then take these stones. I think this would have been better for me. I think that was actually better. This it, it definitely is better. Instead, I'm like, you know, I'm I'm feeling confident that I'm pretty well ahead because I've got moves like this in my future, which is pretty cool. I got the, I've got a solid corner, I don't know where it's getting territory from, I'm seeing death everywhere. So I played here. Is This This is the, the unlimited time, Ferguson. This is the unlimited game. So I played here, it blocked, and I forget how it played this out. Does it jump? It does do the jump. And then I don't care, I'm taking territory because I'm confident that I'm ahead, so I did not play that. I right, Hane, thank you. It plays this, and now I'm seeing death in my future because I did not play this move. I, I really needed to get this move in. So, okay, we play the Hane. And now we go down a very, very unfortunate path for myself. But we are going down it anyway. Hello, unfortunate path. How are you? What's your name? My name is Sacrifice. You can see what it's doing, right? Wait. No. I don't know my own moves. I apologize. I Atari here first, and then connect. It goes here, and then I played there. I think. Nope. I lied again. I'm getting these moves completely wrong, and I played the game. That's that's embarrassing. We played here. It plays there. I take. And then it played there. Okay, now I got you. Then it plays here, and I decided that these stones are important because I guess they kind of are. It extends, I connect, and that's wrong too. I think I probably ought to have taken here, because there's no reason not to. The connection's a little bit silly, but all right, whatever. I played there, and then it gets to draw out these stones. Well, okay, rip those stones, I guess. So at this point, I'm in a little bit of trouble because I didn't play the Atari. Like I mentioned, like I mentioned, before playing the bottom, I should have played the Atari on those stones because the Atari is huge to prevent any of this from happening. I mean, I can still link up my stones, but it's a pain in the butt to do so. I mean, we can connect underneath, but oh man, is that annoying. That is just really irritating. I decided not to back off here, and I decided to attack. It comes out, and I try to decide... Who exactly is better at Ko? Is it going to be me, or is it going to be the, the program? Who is better at Ko? So, alright. Time to find out. Who's better? And it doesn't... It kind of avoids it for a little while. It connects here. I connect there. It pushes through. 
Nope, I didn't do that. Sorry. I block there. It comes out, and then I go to Ko. Because I figure this is a big move. It can it can save that, because I can still save my stones underneath. I just like want to be out in the middle and not be in trouble anymore. But it cuts, I take. It extends, I connect. And then Atari's. At this point in the game, Crazy Stone was evaluating Black's position as completely hopeless. Like, completely and utterly hopeless. Because I think, I'm almost positive, that it thinks that I'm dead on the left-hand side of the board. It thinks that all of my stones are dead. Because if we go back to uh, the application, like, at this point in the game, this little white bar was, like, way over into here. I think it only imagined that I had, like, a 5 or 10% chance of actually doing anything in this game. It was really, really un unfavorable for me. So, okay, looks like I'm in trouble. I decided to reduce, because I think all he has is the middle, so all I just need to get into the center, and then I'm good. Crazy Stone tries to develop the center. I haunt it. Crazy Cuts. I decide that this is good enough. All I want is that stone any those uh, that corner anyway, because I'm actively trying to do a little bit of counting here. And I don't really see... Whoops, not that. That's a take. Sorry, my bad. I don't really see myself as being that far behind, given the upper left-hand corner is big and can only continue to grow. The stones on the left are dead, and I've got the corner and it's undercut. So I think the larger corner here in the upper right is really all that I needed. So it's kind of all I really went for. Connects on up. Go ahead and block. This is a huge move. But then so is getting into the middle, so I was I thought that was Mei. It pokes, I bamboo. Played the Hane, so I played in kind. It didn't respond to me here though, which I thought was interesting. I thought that it would, but I was wrong. I was kind of sad about that. But undeniably, this is a large point. I play here, and it drops down. I play here, and it backs off, so I get to Atari. Tries to take a few points in the middle, so I take. It backs off again. At this point, again, it's, that it's quite sure of its lead, which I thought was interesting. We start playing some basic reduction. Tries to reduce me. I reduce it back. Tries to keep me out of the middle. Poke, poke, poke. Poke, poke, poke. Keeps me out of there. So I go ahead and I follow up. I get to do that, and continue reducing the top. I descend down, and this is the telling move of all of it. This is the telling move of everything. I played here, and it went away. I'm pretty sure it thinks I'm dead here. I respond to it, and then it goes back and plays here. Like, it's been doing this the entire game, right? Like, it plays this. Or, like, I play here. It plays this. I respond to it. I'm threatening to kill off the stone it just played. And then it goes back and responds as if, like, E18 is a time suji. It really confuses me.
when it does this. Like, I'm not sure why it's doing this. But it does, in fact, do that. So I Hane. It plays here. I Atari. You go ahead and connect on up. It connects on up as well. I have Sente, so it's Isai 18 stone is toast. This move could kill me though. This move is dangerous. Like, I thought about playing the Hane in response, I thought about backing off in response. Finally, I went ahead and clamped. Like, if I play here, for example, then we're in a little bit of a problem. Maybe not. I thought there was a chance to kill me there. What did I read? Maybe I read nothing. Like, if it plays here, could it do anything? Hmm, not sure. Yeah, 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 I guess... I guess that's hallucinating. Maybe, maybe nothing here works. I thought that was a really tricky move when it played it, but maybe I'm wrong. But alright. I don't understand why Bat decided to play a bot. I thought he hates them. Um, It's not just a bot. It's now uh, like a program with a lot of features that they're selling on Steam, right? Anyway, so I played this. He plays there. I connect, I don't wanna die. And the minute he played these, the minute these variations were played, that bar that I've been referring to on and off throughout this game drastically swung in my favor. Like, up until this point, it was clear that it was evaluating this, this incorrectly. That black was supposed to be dead. I, I'm assuming. Because you can kind of get a hint as to what uh, the program thinks is happening by the fact that it's evaluating who's ahead. Like, what the score is and where that little bar is moving back and forth under the, under the board. And when this happened, it drastically changed. So it goes and tries to keep points, but it's obviously weak points behind an exchange. I take some large points for myself. It's trying to get anything done. But there's not a lot that can be. Now th those, what really, what really, really, really was weird for me was when it did this. Not that, sorry. This. It tries to go to Ko here. It took, but then I retook because I can make eyes here. So I'm not particularly interested. It Atari'd me and retook this, so I took here. And then it tried to cut through me then retake, and then I retook. So for a while it tried to fight a double co. For a while it tried to fight a double co. Before it finally gave up and I was able to connect.
at this point, uh, I continue to play out every. I continue to play out everything, but the only co back can win. Yeah, exactly right. The game continues to go on for a little bit, but it's mostly just end game. And the final result is I win by twenty four point five. So this game, I thought was one of the weaknesses that I heard about the program in that it can judge a life and death problem incorrectly and then when it does you have a serious problem because it thinks it's ahead and doesn't try anything too harsh I guess but yeah the judging the uh, problem incorrectly though is a huge huge problem that this thing does have um, one thing that I thought was interesting about this though was the fact that unlike a human it will keep trying to do things like this situation was pretty scary because suddenly it's coming back into the game and potentially killing off my stones I was not a fan of that so one of the strengths of this game or one of the strengths of this program rather is that it will not give up uh, easily, and it will keep trying to find ways for it to win. And I think that's actually pretty valuable. Um, after b8, can white c9? After b8... This one. Can white c9? That's Atari itself, so no. So no, can't do that. B8 is killed. So after we saw that, I wanted to play it in Blitz game to see how it does when it doesn't have unlimited time. Is there a difference in its playing? Then the answer to that is yes, which I will show you now. Now I do want to make a, a point that when it's Blitz, it doesn't have a rank anymore. It just has blitz. Right? So you don't know what it is. Like, it's... The rank vanishes. It's just blitz. And I tried to play exactly like I did in the first game. Against it. So I tried to set up a Chinese variation. But now it said it doesn't want to do that against me. It says no Chinese variation. I'm going to pincer you widely here. So I enclose. We are no longer in Chinese. It kicks me. I decided to extend to see how it fights. Grab base for myself. It um, got two space extend. I played here. Now the time settings for this game is no main time and just 20 second Bioyomi. No main time, just 20 seconds. And it does use every second of that 20 seconds throughout the entire game. It will essentially always wait until one second is left to make its move, which I thought was interesting. Because you don't really understand how long a 20 second game can go until someone is actually using 20 seconds on every last move that's played. It's actually longer than you think if you're, if you're fully using your time. This was a bit weird. I expected this. Not that. Something like this so it could uh, have a nice uh, solid life and I get some nice solid shape. I did not expect for it to try to go on the outside. Because this is a standard don't want shape. Like, you don't want to play this, ever. This is quite a not good shape for white, right? I decided to cut here because cutting's fun. Ladder doesn't quite work for me, but that's fine. I just want two uh, separate groups. And right away, I get really confused about this game. Because it jumps away. 
I seek to strengthen myself in the middle. It's connecting up. And then I'm defending myself. And the minute I defended myself, it drastically said white was ahead. So that is by far the very first thing that I can understand about uh, this thing's programming, is that it is way, way too reliant on actual territory. I don't think this thing has very much weight on weak groups. I think it's all about exactly how much territory it has. And that's about it. Because right now, I would say that black is ahead, not white. But it thought that white was dramatically ahead because white's picking up, you know, extra points over here, and it's probably assigning it some extra points here somewhere to go along with the fourth line territory that it has here. And black doesn't have that, right? Black has like third line enclosure, uh, like a point or two here and here. And that's about it. So if we take the fourth line as actual points and we equal these things, then I don't know, maybe white's ahead in that regard. But the extra influence that um, I have in this game, I was I was feeling quite the opposite of the program, that I was actually ahead and not, not the program. Um, then it played here. And I thought it was going to go for this variation, where we go and do this. And then maybe seek to play here. I thought that would actually give it a lot of, that's actually a lot of territory. That's actually pretty good. That would make sense with its, with its estimate. Because it's, it's saying that I'm going to take fifth line territory in a minute, that, therefore I'm ahead. And that would be kind of scary. That would have been kind of scary. But instead, it tried to kill me. Whoops, my bad. Instead, it tried to kill me. And then, for the rest of the game, until I go back and I manually kill this, it says white's ahead. Because, I don't know, it was a giant question mark as to what happens here in the upper left. So I play here, or he plays there, sorry. It plays there. I approach. We get a defense in. White's point count is just going higher and higher. I poke at it, it backs off. I'm trying to get the surround for the middle because I'm valuing my uh, influence heavily, whereas it is valuing territory. And that, I think, is its one giant weakness. I just don't think it values influence and weak groups as much as it should. I take here, right? Yeah, I do. So now we're playing this way. I'm getting myself a bit of a base here. Now there's a lot of really complicated crap here that I just couldn't decide on. Like, there's the descent here, because we can't go the other way on this one. <clears throat> I don't think. But I didn't really want to get into any kind of life and death problem because I didn't read any of this out and I had like 20 seconds left and I did not want to risk just being killed. Because I know that I'm pretty bad in, in uh, Blitz games as well. So I didn't want to do that. and I didn't want to get into that variation. Instead I went with a more honest, let's just go and code this variation. Whoops, my bad. So we play here, we play here, and then I go back and play this, because my threat's coming from here, which it ignores, right? Yeah, it did. So then I take that. Uh, at that point, the middle is a bit more strong, is a bit stronger for white. It's getting closer towards defending uh, the three stones in the middle. That's an issue, sure. But this capture is big. It goes and pokes me, I can't do much besides just grin and bear it. It's like, yeah, I meant to do this, this is what I wanted. <laughs> Takes the stones, try to get a little bit more solid in the center of the board. It's trying to pick up some points for itself, I'm trying to back off and gain some extra. 
poke, 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 poke. Now it looks like we're in trouble, but I see that there's a little bit of Aji here. It bamboos, tries to kill me, but it does not in fact read the Liberty Shortage, which is a bit awkward, but it's not the end of the world because it looks like if it just tries to take the right hand side, that could still be worth quite a bit of points. I don't think it's going to be enough since it's still undercut on top of the board. But it looks like it should be able to grow here still. I respond. Mm, excuse me. I respond. It connects. Tries to live here. I try to kill it. It's trying to kill my corner any way that it can. But it's getting rid of its own eye shape on the bottom, which is very, very val uh, valuable to it, unfortunately. Because when it plays away, I realize there's a horrible mistake that it just made, right? Because I can play here because I've got me eye at uh, A and B to cut it off. Instead, it's moving to try and take more territory. I move for it to try and get Sente back. I guess it tried to fight me on Sente because it went into my corner. At that point, it throws in in order to keep the outside. And at that point, I'm done following it around like a little puppy and I start attacking. Nope, I don't. What? I do. Oh, I push and then it ignored me. Right, okay, I'm sorry. It tries to live here. Connection here is only to kill off the two stones at H2, so I don't care, and I play here instead. It tries to cut through me, I think. It goes back and forth so many times that I get confused at which order the moves come in. Here it's trying to kill me, but this kills it. Tries to come out, so I double Hane. It wants to kill here, and if I'm not careful, if I like push at, if I do this, I'm in a little bit of trouble because I have a liberty issue. But if we play here first, I can come out a little bit easier. So it plays here, and I manage to come out, and I just need four liberties, which I get after one extension. So this is now fine in Sente, so I Atari. It plays the Atari on me, goes ahead and connects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely needs more than 20 seconds. That's, that's one of the things that I was going to say. Anyone who buys this program, I'd be very, very careful at uh, playing it in 20 second go. Because it doesn't look all uh, that great. Whoops, my bad. That's, that would have killed me. Uh, I play here and it play. No, wait, what? Confused. Oh, right, I play here. It plays here, and then I play... No, that's not what happened either. What? 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 I play there. It plays there. Got it. Uh, no. I play here. Okay. And then it plays here. I played there. And then it plays here. And then I played there. Okay, got it. But that's the thing that really confused me there, Nuclear, is that I have yet to play a single game against this bot where in the opening, into the mid game, it doesn't think it's ahead. Like, I always see that bar clearly filling up for white. That it thinks that black is just behind. So that's... I think it should always be playing as if it's ahead in the beginning of the game. So it shouldn't be doing crazy makeup for lost points thing until like much later in the mid game, as far as I've seen so far. Let's see, it Atari's me here, I connect. 
That that actually yes, Tomb of the Unknown Player. That is something that I thought about as well. I thought like, oh my god, is this like a walking example of why uh, Kaje says that Komi is just OP? Because like even the boss like, yeah, it's cool. I'm white. I'm 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 obviously ahead. Because I actually have not played this thing as white yet. I've been playing this constantly, doing nothing but throwing mini Chinese variations at it, because I'm trying to see if it will ever play that first sequence again. If it will ever play that Joseki uh, from the long game over again, or if it will get it right this time, or what will happen. So I keep throwing mini Chinese at it to see what it does. I, I do need to play white to see if it turns around and thinks that I'm ahead the entire game and to see how it responds then. That, that's actually a good idea. Uh, so it blocked there. I have Sente. I played here, and the minute I played here, and it went into this, and I poked its eye out. The game, in, again, immediately swung in my favor. Once I pointed out that this corner was dead, suddenly its evaluation of who's ahead in this game drastically changes. So I don't know what it was reading in the upper left-hand corner, but it absolutely thought that it was ahead. Uh, long game, did it win? No. Long game, I won by 24.5. Uh, it plays here, I go there, it Atari's me, because it's just trying to find like any way to make up extra points, I guess. Um, it played here, I don't know why. I went ahead and kill it, it throws in. Throws in. Plays the Atari. And then I think after I cut all that off, it resigned, right? No, actually it did one more crazy thing. Um, it Atari, I connected, I connected. This was funny too. The minute it connected and I played here, it said it, w it got a bunch of points back. I guess because it thought it was going to get like a bunch of outside info or something? I don't really know. But then it did this, and this, and that. And then it went here, and I dropped down, and I connected, which was a bad idea. Because now I go here and here, and then it can Atari me and I take. It went here, I went there. It takes, I Atari. And at that point it resigned. At this point, Crazy Stone resigned. So I don't think you should play against it on uh, on 20 second go, unless you have a much more powerful computer than I do. Because that's one thing. That's one thing that um, has been mentioned that the programmer says depending on what your CPU is, it's uh, strength differs wildly. Um, now, I have a pretty decent computer. Uh, it's not top of the line. I don't have, like, uh, the latest i7 or anything. I have, I think, the highest model of i5 that I can purchase. And I'm running that. So, my processor could, could be better, so maybe that's what was hurting it. And why it seemed like it was um, a little bit weak-ish. Maybe it's because it needs more than just my i5 to go against to like really power it effectively. Maybe it does need an i7. Maybe it needs twin Xeons like in some kind of server board. I don't know. But I think to really hit this thing at 7 down level, even if you give it unlimited time, I'm really think, thinking you probably can't do that on just what I'm running. Next stage of Patreon type. I don't think it uses, I don't think it uses a graphics card there too with the unknown player. So that's just what I found against it so far. Now the question is, do I think that this thing has any value whatsoever? 
And the answer to that surprisingly is yes, because when I was playing this thing, it felt like I was playing one of the most stubborn Taijin players that I've ever seen. Because it will try everything against you. Like, anything it could read, anything with any kind of, like, percentage chance of succeeding, it tried. And that was very much like playing a Taijin player. So it kind of felt like I was training to play Taijin players when I was playing the long game and I was playing uh, the these Blitz games that I've been playing against it so far. It just constantly felt like I was playing a Taijin player, and that in itself has value. Like if you have a if your weakness in your game is that you just like can't hold a game together, and your opponents keep coming back in and you know like quote stealing the win from you, then this might be something to train against because this thing will keep trying to come back and do some kind of shenaniganery uh, to like really uh, beat you. So. That in and of itself could be uh, good for training, if that is in fact your weakness. Um, if you're very impatient in your play while you're playing, especially when you think you're ahead, this will help you get over that, I would have to say. I don't trust its, mo its analysis mode right now, based on what I've been seeing from its uh, evaluation. Like, I need a bit more information right now, I think, on how it evaluates the board based on this uh, black and white bar at the bottom and who it thinks is ahead before I trust it to analyze games that I send it. Because too often it's wrong on who's ahead based on those life and death problems. So I'm not sure if I would trust it saying that there's good moves or bad moves. But I would say it's absolutely uh, useful for those two reasons that I mentioned, and I can, I'm probably going to keep playing this uh, off and on because I also have a problem, especially in you know faster games while I'm streaming, uh, to keep something dead or to keep the game won, etc., etc., etc. So I don't know, maybe I, I can see this being useful to me. I can see it definitely having value. Uh, let's see what else. Well, Bats, you're strong enough to distinguish a bot suggestion from a good suggestion. That's true, that's true, but I meant more in regards for someone who might be purchasing it who isn't that strong. Like, I'm not sure how much I, like, really value that. I think I'm going to throw some professional games at it and see how it evaluates those games before I make up my uh, mind on how it evaluate on its, like, evaluation. And maybe I'll do a small video follow-up when I decide when I have, like, that data in. But overall, it was, it was interesting playing this. Um, I lost to it once. I did lose to this once. I don't have the game saved, unfortunately, because I, I lost to it once, I went to sleep, and the power went out. So when I woke up the next morning, like, I was going to save it. I couldn't because the power flickered and the game was gone. So I was going to show you that one, uh, sadly. Let's see what happened in that game. That was a game, I don't remember exactly what I did in that one. Um, but that was a game in which... No, stupid, why do you keep playing that? You there, there, where we played not that where I again played Chinese against it. No. Was that white? I think I, I think it played the Chinese. Oh god, I don't even remember anymore. Yeah, I think maybe I was white. The one game I play is white against it, and we got into this variation. Yeah, we got into this crazy variation, only it didn't take up take me up on the co. 
and it connected. And I tried to do something weird and fancy here, and I got and it called me on it completely, and I got killed. I don't remember how or what the board was like or anything, sadly. I've been playing too many games recently. But yeah, this variation, when I played this against it, it did kill me. For some reason. I cut here, and this just went very, very badly, and I had to resign. So yeah, I don't remember how that went, but I did, I did lose a game against it. I did lose a game against it. Because again, it'll try anything against you. It'll try everything. So be prepared for that if you buy if you purchase the game or the that program rather. But I do want to again thank the person who made this uh, possible. I've been having a I've actually been having a lot of fun exploring what this thing can and cannot do, and greatly appreciate your generosity. I hope you guys have a bit more of an idea on whether or not this program is for you. Play with no Komi. Note to self, don't play the co variation. I don't know, you might be able to because it backed off from the co. It connected rather than go to co. I think I just I think I just tried to go too insane and create too many groups or something and I got wasted. Anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed today's stream. Hope you've enjoyed this little mini review of Crazy Stone. I'm of course going to be poking at it some more with like with its uh, evaluation to see how it analyzes pro games and who's ahead and who's not, and see if I can't maybe nail down why it thinks that. Um, anyway, I will see you guys next week. Hope you guys take care. See you then. I'm going to go eat. Goodbye.